So I had bought my first house, and so now we finally had a place for the Mach 1. And so it was a lot of fun. We put in a yard and did some things to it to make it nice. And I was just very happy to have my own garage. It was a very nice, deep, oversized two-car garage. So a three-car would have been nice, but I just enjoyed having a place for it where I could keep it nice. And uh, we even started taking the car down to Midnight Mayhem in Las Vegas and started racing it at the track. So here's a few clips from that. So on this run with an S2000, he had drag radials, I was on street tires, I spun in the beginning, but I was able to just reel him back in and pass him, and it was awesome to see this video later and hear the support from my brother and friends. Now after one of the passes I heard a horrible noise and it was vibrating up through the stick shift so I thought that I had lost the transmission or broke something so I drove it all the way home hearing kind of a humming noise. We took the wheel off and we could hear what you hear now which is just a horrible sound but what it actually turned out to be was the ABS reluctor ring which should be pressed on. Previous owner had beat this on without pressing it so it came loose and it was just freewheeling. So once I found out that the car wasn't broken, I still wanted to do something more with it rather than just fix it and put it back together. So I ordered the full kit from Late Model Restoration, but I actually went back and pieced it together separately from the kit that they offered because I wanted to combine Moser axles with the Ford racing gears. They had like Yukon or some other brands that were together as a package. And so I went back and found everything that was in the kit and then you know, remade it um, individually, and the price really wasn't that much different to have all of the Ford parts in it, the Cobra 31 spline differential, the Moser 31 spline axles, and uh, the Ford Racing 410 gears. And so I went through this and I thought, okay, I'm going to do a YouTube video on this step by step because I did a lot of research. And I ended up taking out all the races, put in new races, everything that, you know, some people might just skip as part of their steps and say, well, that's usually fine. But everything the Master Bearing Kit came with, I replaced and uh, just put a step by step video together. Now, of course, uh, the camera footage wasn't the best. The lighting in the garage wasn't the best. It was when I was first starting out the YouTube videos. And uh, I was just doing it to try to help people see how a gear install uh, would go. And it took some editing. I'd have to go back and uh, remake some of the shots with the new parts, even though, because I didn't get a good shot of the old part coming off. Um, but uh, in the end, the videos turned out really well. And to this day, it's even helpful to refer back to them if people have questions, and I can just give links. And so, um, anyway, I did everything by the book and really did a lot of the research for it and you know, ran the, the right gear oil. I torqued everything down properly, got the right measurements for backlash, for preload. And with all the time and effort, I wanted it to come out perfect. I didn't want to have any gear whine or problems, so I actually pulled the carrier out several times, put it back in. You can see the teeth are already painted in that shot. And so um, I changed the backlash around until everything came out perfect. 
with the pinion uh, spacer, it actually was the original one. You just swap it over, and nine times out of ten, it's correct, and it was. So I got kind of lucky on that. But uh, I started with the shims on each side as kind of the base to go off of. And remember, the car had had 355s put in, again, new ones, by a different person if you saw video number one. So I was kind of using what they started with and, uh, you know, really took the time to make sure it was right. The pattern came out really good, and uh, I was thrilled when it was all said and done. I didn't have any kind of gear whine or problems. And more than anything, I was just happy that now I wasn't afraid of this. Everything in the past, like, oh, I hear a noise, I'm afraid of it. Now what? Now I knew everything that was involved. I had accomplished something new. I had worked hard to make sure that it was right. And now I can give advice to you know help other people who are in the same situation. And some people say, should I just take it to a shop? And it's like, you know, depends on the shop. You might have someone just throw it together and send you on your way. Or if you take, uh, you might be able to take more time on it and get it just right. As you can see here, we were right at 8,000th backlash, right where it should be. And uh, that was after doing a lot of work to get it there, but I wanted to enjoy the car forever. Now you may have heard the story about the Terminator that was getting parted out and cut up because the guy got behind on his payments. I'll put the link to it in the video description. But basically, um, I was able to get some Terminator parts for the Mach 1. Uh, my friends got away with everything else, but what I ended up with was the IRS, which I later sold, and then uh, I got the pair of the Terminator mirrors. And so these were the red fire color, so they didn't quite match. Um, but uh, I did go and have them painted, and so uh, they match very well. My only regret is I should have had them also paint the black uh, because that still had a few rock chips in it, and so but the paint looks really good. Uh, I also earlier had got a aluminum fuel door and uh, found out that it's not the same as the bullet, so when I put it on the Mach 1, it just didn't quite look right. Uh, it didn't look as shiny. And so years later, I would find that the bullet fuel door was actually polished, and it's a little different than the other Ford Racing product. And so I got one of those just because it's a very limited, hard-to-find piece. And I put it on the Mach 1, and I really like the way it looks on the Mach 1, which being the bullet-specific one, again, it's a little shinier. So I think I just didn't like the, uh, the duller brushed aluminum look of the Ford Racing one. But I think you could polish the other one if you tried. But uh, anyway, it turned out really nice, and so... It, being that the Mach 1 is garage kept and in the, you know, out of the rain and everything, it's kind of a nice thing to have on the car. It might as well be on the car than in the box. Um, so unless I plan on the car getting wet, that's uh, the way that I keep it. Otherwise, the Mach 1 has done a great job. It's needed a few things here and there, motor mounts and stuff, and I've made good videos about that. Uh, I did a whole walk-around video about it, too, not too long ago, and it basically tells a similar story to what you've heard here um, but, you know, at the time, my Mach 1 was one of the worst condition Mach 1s out there, being it was 2010, and uh, it ended up now being kind of one of the nicer ones that you see on the road. And so um, I'm very committed to taking care of it, and it uh, is not a daily driven car, but when I do take it to work, I really enjoy driving it. And uh, they're becoming harder to find and more rare. So, uh, you know, the Mach 1 has also kind of been... The in-between car, I drive my GT on a daily basis, and I have my Terminator, you know, as like the weekend, you know, thing. So uh, I try to make uh, time for the Mach 1 more and more. So anyway, this is just part two of the video, and the story continues. I really enjoy driving this around with my brother. It's most fun to drive these cars with somebody else. They're meant to be enjoyed that way. And so, you know, to go out alone and drive around is just not as much fun for me. I really enjoy just conversations that we have, enjoying life, enjoying the time of year, especially as it starts to cool down now. And so I'm just happy that uh, I was able to have this car, turn it into what it is. If you haven't seen video one, uh, go back and check that out too. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. I'm going to add some more videos to the channel, the story of my GT, the story of my Cobra. And uh, if you haven't seen Justin SVT's channel, please check it out. He's my twin brother, and he's even more crazy I am, than I am with these cars. He has stories uh, on his channel that are like this one. 
and uh, so go give him a follow too. But anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys on the next video.